Being able to give a good presentation is a valuable skill that's needed by people in a range of professions, but it's easy to present a session that's memorable for all the wrong reasons. The short video will look at the top 10 mistakes that people make when giving a terrible presentation and hopefully offer some solutions that can be used to fix them. The number one mistake that people make isn't forgetting their slides or having a tech meltdown, but going off topic. This is surprisingly easy to do, especially if you're nervous about speaking to an audience. It can be tempting to put everything you know about a topic into the presentation, but this is a surefire way to lose your audience's interest. It's important to think about the audience every time you prepare a presentation. What do they need to know about a topic? What knowledge might they already have? And how can you make sure that they get the most out of the session? You should always tailor the content of the presentation to the audience you're actually talking to, rather than just showing off your knowledge about a subject. This is known as developing the key message or messages of your presentation. What do you really want the audience to leave your session knowing? Keeping these key messages in mind when preparing your presentation will help you to keep it on track. Write them down on a post-it note and keep them by your workspace when drafting your talk, and make sure that every point you're making relates back to at least one of these points. If it doesn't, then it doesn't belong in this presentation. Some people find it helpful to storyboard their presentations to make sure that they're sticking to these key messages, whilst others like to work backwards from the conclusion to the introduction. However you prefer to plan, maintaining a focus on the message you want to deliver will help you to produce a presentation which makes the best use of both your and your audience's time, something they will all appreciate. Most people are sensible when it comes to the actual design of a presentation, but there are a few common pitfalls that you need to avoid. There are many different tools available when designing a slide deck from the traditional PowerPoint through to interactive videos, but whichever tool you end up using, you should think carefully about choices such as fonts and colors, so the result is as accessible as possible. Using a clear sans serif font may make your presentation less visually exciting, but it will make it easier for people to read both those in the room and people viewing later on a screen. Think about potential issues such as color blindness when selecting a color scheme. Certain color combinations are hard to read, for example, red and green or blue and gray. The safest option is to use a contrast between your text and background, for example, dark writing on a light background or light writing on a dark background. In order to keep things looking professional, it can also be a good idea to avoid using special effects such as floating or appearing text. There are some circumstances where these can really enhance a presentation, but the general rule is to keep them to a minimum and always double check that they will work as intended on the machine you're using on the day itself. No one wants to be confronted with sudden chimes or other noises when a bullet point appears on their slide deck. The best advice when designing your presentation is to make sure that you're consistent. It can be tempting to use a lot of different approaches, but having a central theme or color scheme can help to ensure that your slides look professional. You might find that there's a specific template you're expected to use, which can take a lot of the hassle out of preparing something appealing and accessible. It can be tempting to fill a slide with text. Not only is this an easy way to give your audience something to look at, it takes the focus off you. However, a common mistake is to over rely on text to make your point, as this can be unappealing to even the most interested audience. You might want to consider an alternative way to communicate your message, such as using a single bold image, as this might help to keep your audience engaged. If you're presenting something that needs to have words on the slides, then there are two common mistakes to avoid, the wall of text and long bullet points. If your slides are completely covered in text, then what you have is not really a slide deck, but a document. When faced with a choice between reading something and listening to a speaker at the same time, most audience members will default to reading, which means you could be giving the greatest performance of your life, but they're not listening, so you're wasting your effort. To avoid the problems with the wall of text, a lot of presenters use bullet points instead. This can be a better way of presenting the information, but the temptation is then to include multiple long bullet points, which end up replicating the same problems. If you're going to use bullet points, remember to keep them short and sweet, seven to 10 words maximum. They're there as a prompt for you and the audience, not as a script to replace your entire speech. 
issues with too much information don't stop with an excess of text. There can also be problems with complicated graphs and charts which make no sense. It's hard to represent data as well as we would like to in an easily readable format, especially in a presentation where people might be at the back of an auditorium or viewing the slides online. Part of designing a good presentation is being selective with the information that you use to make a point. I'm not suggesting that you manipulate the data in any way, but it might be that your audience doesn't actually need to see every small detail of the information in order to get the point. If it's vital that your audience study a graph or a chart in detail, then it might be a good idea to offer it to them in an alternative format, such as a handout. This allows you to increase the size of the image and make sure that people are able to refer to any particular points without squinting at an axis label that they can't actually read on the screen. One of the most common mistakes you can make is to simply read out your slides word for word, particularly if you've included a lot of text. As discussed, if all you're going to do is read out the text on your slide, then you might as well just send these round in advance and save everyone a lot of trouble. You should also think of your slides kind of like your backing group, but remember that you are the star of the show that people have come to listen to. The slides are there to help back you up and illustrate your points, but they shouldn't be the center of attention. Many novice presenters like to read the slides out as they feel it helps to keep them on track, but there are all better alternatives to using your slides as a script. You can have your own notes with you and you can go into as much detail as you need to make yourself feel comfortable. If you've practiced your presentation and know your subject, then you'll probably find that you don't use them quite as much as you think you will. Whatever level of notes you have, it's important not to make a similar mistake and just read these out word for word instead. They're a prompt a way to get back on track if you lose your place, and a comfort blanket. But remember that this is a presentation, not a public reading. Nerves are something that worry a lot of people, no matter how experienced they are at giving presentations. Nerves are natural and believe it or not can actually be a good thing as they help to stop you sounding flat and monotonous. If you do get nervous, there are some things that you can try. Most of the time, nerves are caused by the fear of what could go wrong how the tech could fail, how you could forget what you're going to say, or how someone might ask you a question that you don't know the answer to. The best thing you can do is to try and anticipate these issues and prepare for them. Try out the technology before the big day, especially if you're using an unfamiliar setup. Have some notes to jog your memory if you forget your place and spend some time going over the material beforehand to make sure that you know your stuff. You probably know more than you think you do and you'll be surprised at what you'll remember, even under pressure. There are various relaxation techniques which you can use just before you start. Taking some time to calm your breathing before a presentation can not only make you feel better, but also help you to sound more confident. Or you could follow the advice of Dr. Amy Cuddy, who recommends standing like a superhero. Her research found that adopting a power pose for five to ten minutes before a stressful situation can actually alter your brain chemistry by increasing your testosterone levels and decreasing your level of cortisol, the stress hormone. We would just recommend that if you're going to stand like Superman or Wonder Woman before your presentation, you might want to find somewhere private to do so. None of these options are a quick fix, but one of the best cures for nerves is time and practice. The more chances you get to present, the more normal it will seem, and you'll wonder why you ever felt so nervous in the first place. Depending on who you ask, up to 90% of what you're communicating isn't coming out of your mouth, but from your body language and the tone that you use. If you look bored or uncomfortable, your audience will pick up on that and it will impact what you're trying to say. Presenting online adds another dimension to this. If you present online and keep your camera on, then your audience will be able to see you close up in a way that they can't in person. It's important to be aware of this and make sure that you look engaged with what you're saying. Remember that you are visible to the audience from the moment that you enter a room, stand on a stage or switch your camera on. Even if you're not speaking, you need to try and maintain engaged body language throughout. You need to strike a balance between looking bored and or terrified and being over animated as this can be distracting. One thing to practice is your voice projection. Too soft and people will struggle to hear you even with a microphone. Too loud and you risk turning into Brian Blessed. Try to speak at a volume that is clear but not overwhelmingly loud. 
Something else you might want to look at is your pacing. Many of us speed up our speech when nervous, and this can make us hard to understand. If this is a problem for you, try some simple tongue twisters to practice speaking at a moderated speed while still being clear. Finally, a quick word about eye contact in in-person presentations. There are many cultural differences around what is acceptable, but as a guide, you should try and glance in the vague direction of the audience rather than staring only at your notes or your slides. Try and bounce your eyes around the room to engage the whole audience rather than just focusing too much on someone who looks friendly because you can come across as a little bit creepy. A big concern for a lot of people is how to deal with the audience member who asks an awkward question, or worse still, a question that turns out not to be a question at all, but a lengthy monologue. Such interruptions are unfortunately a fact of life at most presentations, but there are some methods for dealing with them. Remember that this is your presentation and that you are in control. You can choose whether to take questions during a session or wait until the end and make this clear before you begin your speech. Which of these options you choose is up to you and will depend on your audience, the topic and your own personal preference. Novice presenters or those new to a topic might prefer to wait until the end to avoid interrupting their flow, whilst more experienced presenters may feel more comfortable taking questions throughout. If you are interrupted or the questioner will just not let something go, the best thing to do is offer to take the discussion away from the main session. You could say something like, that's a really interesting point. I'd love to discuss that with you in more detail after the session. This acknowledges the questioner and gives them the attention thereafter, whilst at the same time freeing you to continue with your presentation. A fear that many presenters share is the awkward question that they can't answer. Don't be afraid to admit that you don't know the answer to a question. Very few people know all there is to know on a topic, despite what some of them might tell you. You could throw the question out to the rest of the audience or offer to find out and let the person know later. You might learn something new and it's a far better approach than just waffling around without answering. Just watch any interview with a politician for proof. Very few presentations stay only in the space they're first presented anymore. And this has become more of an issue as presenting online becomes the norm. In-person presentations can be live streamed, recorded or tweeted in real time so that those not in attendance can catch up. And it's become the norm to share a version of any slides online after the session as a way to increase your reach and enhance your reputation. This does mean that you need to put some extra thought into your presentation especially if you would just be sharing your slides without additional context. Minimalist slides are great as the backup to a talk, but they might be hard to understand without it. Consider adding a transcript or some notes to your slides so that people can follow what you're talking about. You might even want to produce multiple versions of a presentation for sharing, but this can be an extra burden to many. It's also important to consider any copyright implications when sharing presentations with images or other content that you've not created yourself. There are educational exceptions to copyright, but these don't apply when you take the session to a wider audience. Best practice is to fully credit any content created by others and or use images from sites such as Pixabay or Unsplash, which allow for use without any attribution. No matter how much you prepare in advance, you can't always stay ahead of every issue. Technology will fail to work, the flash drive with your slides on will corrupt, and you might even leave your notes on the train. It's best to accept that disasters happen to the best of us, and to try your best to move forward if it happens to you. If things do go wrong, the crucial thing to remember is not to panic. Audiences are surprisingly forgiving of mishaps, but they will remember how you dealt with them. If you start to lose it, then this will make them uncomfortable. So the best thing to do is to stay calm and try to fix whatever's gone wrong. If you can't, then you might just have to continue on as best you can. But it might help to remember that you are the most important part of the presentation. It's you people have come to hear rather than to look at a pretty set of slides. Having a backup plan can make the difference between temporary and total disaster. Prepare multiple copies of slides and store them in different places ideally in hard copy and in the cloud, so they're accessible everywhere. Make sure that you include a PDF version, which you can use if the presentation software isn't up to date on the machine you'll be using. 
This will help to ensure that any fonts and formatting are preserved as you design them. Try and test out the tech you'll be using if at all possible and get a feel for the space you'll be presenting in. Finally, remember that the audience often won't know something's gone wrong unless you let it show. They haven't seen your presentation before, so they don't know if you forgot to say something or if you missed out an element. The most important thing is how you handle things. And if all else fails, at least find out where the exits are so you can make a quick getaway. The important thing to remember when giving a presentation is that no one is out there willing you to fail. They've come to listen to what you have to say and learn from you. The more you present, the easier it will become and you will become a skilled presenter in no time at all. Think about both the design and the delivery of your presentation as one complements the other, but remember that you are always the star of the show. Preparation and rehearsal takes time, but it can overcome most of your problems and increase your confidence. If all else fails, fake it until you make it. You may be nervous on the inside, but if you don't let it show, then your audience will never know. <laughs>